Five years and still talking. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex Bennett. Look, here's me. You see, could I do this if we weren't live? Yeah, I probably could, actually. Uh, listen, we're going to do an interview that we played once before. Um, maybe a couple of times before, I don't know. But uh, uh, I, I did a lot of talking last night, and I've still got a few health problems that are still bothering me a little bit, so I don't want to work myself too hard. So I figured we'd play this interview. We did really good interview with a guy from Saturday Night Live and lots of movies like Deuce Bigelow and so on. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Rob Schneider trying to eat something. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, look who we have here. Mm, gosh, I haven't seen you in a long time. I've been a while, buddy. Yeah, it's been a I'm while. Like- Ladies and gentlemen, please. What? Behind me. What? You got, you, you got videos behind you? I got books behind me. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So you're a reader and I'm a watcher. All right. Yeah, okay. So how have you been, Rob Schneider? Praise, man. But yeah. In a good way, you know? Yeah. It's like um, quality problems. Quali- <laughs> quality problems. They're all problems, but you just want good ones. You know, you yeah. don't want to have to sell your refrigerator to, just to, you want like, you know, to buy crack. That, that's like a bad problem. Yeah. The good problem is you got a TV show, you got to promote it. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, and pay for it, you know, for what, <laughs> whatever extra stuff that Netflix doesn't pay for, I got to pay for. So, so Netflix, okay. Netflix gives Netflix. you a certain amount of money and the rest of it you have to come up with? Yeah. Well, they don't give you the money all up front. They pay you over time. So you got to go to, like, the bank and then borrow some money. And then I just said, you know what, I'll just front it myself and then they'll pay me. When they pay me, it'll be fun. You know, <laughs> so I'm an idiot. Also, I should yeah. tell you that. Yeah, I should tell your listeners that too. Well, now this this thing you've got it's called Real Rob. Yes, sir. And it's on Netflix. Let's get the whole plug out of the way early here in the conversation. All right, and um, it it almost looks in many ways like it's a homemade production. In other words, is that your house? Yes. That Most is you, m- what. Some of it was shot in studio, but some of it's my house, yeah. Yeah, some of it's your house. All right. Uh, is that uh, your child? Yeah, it's cheaper. Yeah. Usually yeah. your own kid. Yeah, and is that your wife? That's my wife. It's cheaper. Use your own it, wife. Yeah, so, and you directed. Wrote a, you directed. Huh? Very much, you know, my, my dream was to try to make something like Faulty Towers my entire <laughs> life. And so I married a woman, luckily, um, a brilliant uh, comedian. Uh, who she's from Mexico. She never acted before, but I just knew she'd be great. And so, you know, I met with John Cleese. He was nice enough to talk to me and get so give me some advice for the series. Yeah. And he said, "Did you write it all? Did you write it all beforehand before you shot it?" And I went, "Yes, good. Then you can get somewhere interesting." <laughs> and so, uh, you know, Cleese kind of gave me. I said, "Can you give me your blessings?" And he kind of did this to me. So it was nice. <laughs> He, He's I, my hero. I had him on the show once years ago at Live 105 in San Francisco. The wow. nicest guy I've oh, yeah. ever dealt with. Oh, incredible. No, no, he was just like, he was so nice to me and generous and telling me stories. And like, and then when I got up to leave, well, he got up to leave and he's like 6'5", you know. Yeah. And uh, he said, well, you know, uh, are you writing the new series? And I said, we're, yeah, we're starting to do an outline. He said, okay, good. See, the difference is when we wrote the first season or the second season, the first season we wrote, we were married. The second season we wrote, we were divorced. No, I don't know. I I can't afford that. He said, neither could I. Uh, Yes, exactly. Exactly. But uh, you're still married, so everything's fine. Yeah, it hasn't come out yet, Alex. (laughs) When does does a new one come out? Midnight. Tonight? Tonight at midnight. Worldwide. 190 countries. Can you imagine this? Wow. Now, the first one must have done okay, otherwise Netflix wouldn't have picked up a second series. I know. What's the point? Yeah, if they don't, yeah. So they were happy enough with it. Enough, you know. I say enough is the word I like to use. But here's my lovely wife. Patricia, say hi to my buddy yeah. for 35 she, she years. Is the other, she is the other star of the program. Hello, Patricia. How are you? 
My, bu- good. my buddy Alex you? Bennett from San Francisco back in the day. He's in New York right now. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, 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 we, we, I, I, I was, uh, I was a judge at your comedy competition. Do you remember? Yes. Eighty what? Eighty. Eighty seven. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Something <laughs> like that. He supported me back then when he didn't have to. Oh, yeah. that's nice. And I, I didn't want to be a judge because I was afraid everybody would say, oh, you're going to fix it and so on. So I didn't want to do it, and I always refused <laughs> to do it. And finally, I, one day I said, I okay. made you do it because you were the biggest comedy supporter in the Bay Area. Yeah. Well, so we, to not have Alex Bennett would be, you know, you missing something. Well, so I said I was going to – oh, it's cute. Uh, 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 I, I said that uh, – uh, I didn't want to do it because people would accuse me of stuff, of knowing you guys and being friends with you people and so on. You and were 100% right, and you should yeah. have stayed out of it yeah. because you had there was a no-win-win situation. Oh, no. so so what basically, happened? your listeners who don't know, yeah. what, the guy who got the win of, of the comedy competition, who had a great show that night, every you know people were unhappy, and they were going to blame somebody because there could only be one winner that night, and I purposely did not want to win because I believed that if you won that, you were cursed. Yes, right. <laughs> and I was right. I was right. You were right. Robin Williams lost it. So did Dana Carvey. There's no way I wanted to win that. <laughs> but anyway, so what happened was I brought my friend Richard Sheckman, Shecky, from The Letterman Show and had him on one side of me and I had my girlfriend on the other. And I said, look, I'm going to vote here. And if you think that I'm voting because I know these guys and I'm prejudiced to these guys and they weren't as good as to get my let just let me know. In other words, keep me honest. Okay. Yeah. And so you come on and I vote on how good your set is. And Warren comes on and I do how good his set is. And the I guess who was the who was the favored comic in that uh, in that bunch? It was a, was it a impersonator or a magician or something somebody i think rick reynolds was the one that rick, was uh, rick reynolds i think he was the one who um i don't know i yeah. mean i i would have to well, say then, if you wrote down his set he was the best of all of us you know it was he, rob becker me uh rick reynolds and then um i forget the other warren two. thomas oh and, yeah, yeah i'm sorry and warren. I, was steven and warren, Pur- steven warren was and, and Warren was the best performer. Yeah, well, 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 Warren won the comedy competition, but here's yeah. why. It's two nights, and uh, you uh, it, it's an, a rolling average of the two nights, okay, between yeah. the judges and the audience voting and so on, all right? So mm-hmm. it was two nights, and what happened was uh, one night, uh, both nights, Warren came in second, and Reynolds right. came in first. But he came in first the first night, third the second night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, that makes sense. and so yeah. it averaged out to Warren winning. And so now everybody's going, Bennett fixed the comedy competition. You know what? You know what? If you would have explained that clearer that night, that would have prevented 40 years of angst. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I think Warren is a better performer, and more likable, and more memorable. Yeah. I mean, I, Rick Reynolds has a, had a better act. I really do, I do it, think so. I think he maybe had a better act, but, well, but I, I... A lot of times with comedians, it's what happened that, in that moment. Yeah, and you got to go with... And, well, and Warren's, Warren, it was Warren's night. Let's look at these people. You certainly have turned out to be a massive failure because you didn't win it, right? <laughs> uh, Rob Becker went on to have a very successful run on Broadway with a Broadway sure. show, One Man Show. $49 right. million dollars he made off of that. Did he make $49 million off of that? It, it, it takes me about seven years to make $49 million. I can't believe yeah. that guy did that. Uh, let's see here. Warren Thomas, of course, died, but he, in the meantime, uh, was a, uh, a writer, for instance, for the way, one of the weigh-in shows, I think, for uh, uh, the first weigh-in yeah. show. Uh, he could have been a huge star. He just didn't have the, the patience, well, I mean, I, I have to say, and the discipline. Well, he also uh, had one other problem. And the problem was that he had phlebitis, which is, a, you know, your veins or something in your knee or something. And they had to give him a blood transfusion at San Francisco General. And that was about the time that AIDS started coming to the front. Okay. Yeah. And he got a bad transfusion and came down with full-blown AIDS. I mean, came, not full-blown, but AIDS. No, full-blown AIDS. He, he had the Carposi's sarcoma and everything. And luckily, the cocktails came along in time to save his life, uh, because he—I remember—remember he was on the edge of death. 
yeah, right. and that kind of killed his career for a while. Uh, yeah, he had a, it was yeah, it was tough. And 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 Warren, you know, as as you know, a lot of the guys that imbibed, we all imbibed. But then there was a time to go home and party, and a time to to, yeah. to sober up. Yeah, and he just the party never ended. Party. I remember staying up. I mean, if you had to hang with Warren, you had to hang out all night. And like, and it, it, it was no one who was funnier. I just we would watch TV till seven o'clock in the morning, and the only way to stay up till seven in the morning was to do coke. And so we were up, <laughs> and I was up with him. He was yeah. making me laugh until I couldn't laugh anymore, until I couldn't make any expressions. The only thing I could do is when he said something funny or watching TV, I would just do this. Uh, uh. He'd say something funny, and I go. Uh. Uh. <laughs> I had no more energy to even vocalize anything more than that. But he even getting that was rewarding to him. But he was still trying to get a laugh, and they, eh, you know, I just don't think of anyone 24 7 who was funnier than Warren Thomas, like well, all day and all night. Towards the end of his life, uh, he was in New York. He was pretty well. The AIDS thing was being handled. Okay, it was it was in it, it was, was in tough. remission. Uh, it was tough for it was tough for him to see other people making it successful and yeah and 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 then also to just not get the appreciation of uh, you know, I mean as as Rick Chris Rock says he's the funniest guy you never heard of exactly and and off the top of his head the best improvisational comedy i've ever yeah i mean the, the funniest guy hands down to hang out with in a yeah, day yeah i mean the but hands but down. what happened was is he i hung out with him quite a bit here in new york for a while good, good. and then all of a sudden i get the news he's dead and he died and we've never been able to get a good explanation of of what he died of but i suspect it was some kind of complications from either that or it could have been drugs you know well, but it, this I, guy I, was I mean, brilliant i would tell you what in my opinion i mean from friends i know who could get clean and then go off it i mean like hey man i'm just gonna do it for one night i'll just go another night i'll yeah. just go again yeah and it's just it's it's i mean i understand it now as a mature man more i mean just look i want to deaden the pain i'm gonna go another night i'm gonna go and then like um your body can't take it anymore. I mean, yeah. I will say, like, you know, Robin Williams, I mean, the, it was the residual effects of what he did 30 or five years ago that I think finally comes back. It's like an upside-down pyramid drugs. It yeah. comes, it, it's effective. Well, in his part. case, he had a disease. I'm trying to remember what it is now. I think he was misdiagnosed. I you honestly really do? do? I, think he, I think he was misdiagnosed, and the drugs, because Dr. Drew Pinsky is a dear friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, um, I asked him about those drugs, mm -hmm. and um, I said, "Could those combination of the drugs that he was on cause depression?" And uh, he said, "Absa f and lutely." Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I do think, like, uh, while well intentioned, those doctors killed him. In my opinion, yeah, you know, I I think they did, and I think the family agrees. And you know, I tweeted that out, and I got 55,000 retweets from all over the world, and that's when Big Pharma attacked me. But, uh, you know, you can't go after those. Those are the monsters there, Big Pharma. What did, how did you attack them? How did they feel they were being attacked? Because I said the Big Pharma killed them. I said these drugs, you know, when you have, you have America is on, you, you have, like, America is being constantly fleeced by Big Pharma. Mm -hmm. You have, like, you, literally, if we continue to go the direction that we're going, Alex, 50, 50 cents on every dollar that comes into that the gross dollar in America is going to go towards health care by 2030. I mean, it's it's just it's unsustainable. I'll, I'll tell you something. I mean, I'll give you a good story about it. You'll love this story. I, I, uh, I have uh, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So there's mm -hmm. this drug. And uh, I took it once. The doctor said, here, try this. And I went out and it cost me 300 bucks. And then I said to him, I, you know, if I need it again, I can't afford the 300. He says, oh, I can get you an exception. It'll only be 75. Yeah. Wow. You know, so I was set. I was buying this stuff at $75. When I come down with a bad bout of it, I'd take this stuff, and it would, it would uh, 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 ameliorate the symptoms, right? Yeah. Uh, I stopped using it for a while because my stomach seemed to be fine. And about a year later, I, w I wanted another prescription for it, and he gave me another prescription. And I, uh, he, I, I, he didn't get me the exception. Uh, oh, no, he tried to get me the exception, and they wouldn't do it, which would bring the price down. 
So I w now I know that the price was 300 about four years earlier. I go into the pharmacy and I say, okay, I want to buy some of this. I, it's got to be somewhere like around $300. She says, well, I will look and see how much it costs. And then I see her write something down and she says, uh, here's what it costs now. And she hands it over to me and it was $2,100 for 60 pills, okay? And uh, I said, that is absurd. You know, I mean, and they went after this guy because he took this AIDS thing, this AIDS drug, and raised the price, what, five or ten times or something like that. These people are doing the same thing with irritable bowel syndrome. They are. The, the thing about it is, like, if we don't nationalize our medicine like they do in, in, in the U.K., if we don't nationalize it, we're going to be in trouble. Just like if we don't nationalize Google and these search engines who are now putting a truth, you know, they're actually, you know, no longer going to like what's the most popular thing which would come up. Now they're just, they're sinking certain things that they decide. Who gets to decide what the truth is? Who gets to decide, well, you know, now they have a thing called the truth vault. Yeah. If America doesn't get behind these things and handle our, our health care. And, 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 well, you know, let, let me finish the story, to... though, about the, about the IBS. So all of a sudden I just thought I'd try something. I, I had said something for digestive problems and whatever, and it's a gummy bear thing, and it's a, yeah. a probiotic. And yeah, I took and it. Works. I took it, and it cle for, for a year I've been clear of any major IBS symptoms. Well, you know? I mean, that's the thing uh, most uh, yeah. Thank God that you found that because most problems that you have, the pharmaceuticals are very good. If you get I me, mean, hey, I love the American medical system. If you're shot, stabbed, run over by a bus, you better <laughs> have, a, have a massive coronary. You better hope it's in America. Yeah. We have trauma care, especially getting shot. God bless these guys. They yeah. know how to fix shot, stabbed, baseball bat to the forehead. They know how to save you here. Yeah. Anything else they can't fix. And the pharmaceutical things, it helps the symptoms. But to get to the root cause of it, mm -hmm. I mean, if you fix your own, your own bacteria in, the, in your gut, you know, mitochondria, once you take antibiotics once, you're never the same again. You can kind of get back to more or less normal, but never 100%. So that gut bacteria is a real problem. And the problem is a lot of kids have this issue, and it causes when you have childhood obesity. Off the, I tell people this, and it's a shocking statistic, Alex. 54.1% of all children, 54, over half, have at least one chronic illness. Wow. That's crazy. Well, uh, but do you include in that, like when I was a kid, I had allergies. You don't include allergies in that, do you? If you have chronic allergies where you have to be constantly medicated, I would include that. Sure. You know, my, my, what my parents did is I, they, they took me into a doctor and he gave me a sh what they call a Schick test in which they do your I arm with all kinds of stuff. And then they see which one blows up real good. Yeah. And uh, 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 they, they found out that uh, uh, pet hair and uh, pollen were my yeah, two biggest too. triggers. So they moved to the country and bought me a cat. <laughs> and within a, I, w I was the kid in the your cl in the class you could hear coming a mile away because you could hear the wheeze, and that okay. happened for about six to eight months uh, during the first summer we were there, and all of a sudden all these allergies cleared up because what they yeah. did by exposing me to my allergy problems was, was uh, yeah. yeah. Was, was, I was allergic to everything when I was a little kid, and my mom just slowly introduced stuff, introduced stuff, introduced stuff until I got better. Yeah. I think per perhaps we get too, too uh, 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 nice with our kids. We were too protective of them. And so, think, I mean, so we I then go, oh, we well, to... you, you well, we have to give him a pill and take care of this. No, let him wheeze his way through an allergy. Yeah, you know? I think so too. I mean, I, I think temporary stuff is good medicine, but like we have to um, protect our kids and, and get them off drugs. We have like, you know, there's 20 million kids are on some, on, on some, for, some uh, form of drug in America. Really? And um, it, ain't, it ain't getting them better. Yeah, uh, but now, think, let, let's, let's say your kid does get really sick and needs an antibiotic. I mean, you wouldn't... It. It's a miracle drug. Yeah. If they need to save your life, it's a miracle drug. Yeah. But, but you know, if you get, like, a little infection, you know, in your lung or something, uh, if it isn't that, uh, you know, yeah. desperate, then let them fight it through. Because, right. um, you know, it, it's just too much of a... Um, a shock to the system to give me antibiotics. I was given antibiotics for everything when I was a kid, and I didn't need it all those times. So we didn't know any better. Yeah. You go to the doctor that you know you, you want something. I think they're well intentioned, 
But you can't just give antibiotics every time you need something. Oh, they used and to think, when I was a kid, they used to think certain things worked that really didn't. I, I Luckily, I don't have thyroid cancer, but uh, I had a sinus problem. And so they took me, I think it was to Kaiser, and they radiated my, my sinuses, right? Because they thought that was a way of clearing things up. Well, luckily, they didn't go for my thyroid because most people who were radiated in their thyroid got so thyroid done. cancer. Yeah. Well, I tell you, you know, the, you know, the American Medical Association, that's what like psychiatrists, they say if they if they could wear white coats, if they thought they could get away with it, they would do it, you know, yeah. Yeah. because it's not, it's not really uh, um, they're not real doctors, yeah. you know, like all, all those drugs. I mean, some of them, I think some of the antidepressants have been a miracle drug for people to get them uh, to help get them uh, and do their daily stuff. But however, these are the same people that recommended, you know, electric shock therapy for people. Mm. I mean, like, whoa. So we have to be really careful about well, what they decide in their diagnostics, what's what's a real thing. Yeah. And I think, you know, for, for little kids, you know, that they're, they're not all going to be the same. And so some, some will have some learning disabilities and to drug them up is a mistake. Well, I'm at the age now where doctors look upon me as an annuity. Uh, you know, and and here's the thing I get from doctors now. Remember, I used to be well, okay, come back next year and let's take a look and see if this thing is any better, any worse, or whatever. And well, now yeah, they yeah. go, come back and see me in six months yeah. because they need the money. I it's know. I like remember I, my dad. I, my I have dad to... was friends with a doctor, Alex, and he said, he said my dad was friends with this guy. He was over the house and they were having drinks and smoking at the time because people used to smoke. Yeah, but dad smoked a pipe because of Hugh have. Hugh Hefner. Yeah. And um, uh, he, the doctor said, oh, I can't wait for the cold and flu season. And my dad said, what? Yeah, God, I, I need to make some money. <laughs> That's yeah, money. Well, well, you know, it's not easy for doctors today. I mean, insurance companies are giving them a horrible time. And, and a lot of doctors are having to go to work for HMOs because they can't afford to have their own practice anymore. So I do feel sorry for the doctors, but you know, it come, come back it's and tough. see me in six months. I went to a urologist and my PSA went up a bit over a year, like a point or something. And and he uh, he said, well, take it. I have to take a test in October. He says, take the test in October and then come see me in six months, and we'll we'll uh, see if if any if there's anything to worry about there. And he happens to be a good doctor, but you know, he could have said, ah, let's wait a year and see what it's like then. You know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm all I'm all for waiting a little bit too. Yeah. You know, and the main thing is you have to Americans have to get healthy on themselves, like what you did. Yeah. The probiotic is is, is, is an answer. Well, for a uh, that lot was of a, uh, after uh, paying for this drug, after going through everything I had to do to somehow get one supply of it granted to me by the by the uh, pharmaceutical company. Yeah. Uh, it turned out that it was, you know, a twenty dollar probiotic a bottle of probiotics every month that cleared up my problem. I know, I know that that's the thing that people need to also address. And just, you know, if I would just tell people for all your listeners yeah. out there, try to get a list on your refrigerator: alkaline foods, acidic foods, and try to go eighty twenty as best you can. If yeah. you do eighty twenty, you age your your organs. Now, are you slow. you're really a nut about this, aren't you? You're, you're yeah. I've I've become you know. I become educated myself. I mean, sometimes like, I just had a ham, a ham and egg sandwich right now. Yeah. But I said, I know later today I'm gonna have to just do steamed vegetables and um, and have some hot water and lemon. I had a huge cup of dark coffee because we're going over the final list of bills for for the TV show with my accountants, my producers in the other room. Yeah. And they're all waiting for me, but I said, hey, I gotta talk to Alex right now. Yeah. And uh, so you know, but you just what you, what you want to do is is you want to age slowly and be healthy and enjoy things. You don't have to have this. Is there a particular thing, the American culture yeah. has dementia. Where I, I, I flew to India. Yeah. They don't have dementia in India. They got a lot of other messed up problems that are, they're, you know, just as bad in other ways. Yeah. Bacterial infections, dirty water, and like other problems and yeah. diseases that are eradicated here. But they don't have dementia. And so what is the difference? Well, you know, I'm, I'll tell you what the difference is. What, here's what I think. Okay. Every country has its disease every country has its lack of a disease uh yeah. i i was talking to uh, you, you remember a doctor uh, what's his name the guy the uh, weight loss guy i used his diet the uh low carbohydrate oh, yeah. diet yeah. dr atkins, atkins. I, I used to have him on my show here in new york 
And I said to him one day, I said, I was in Europe and all the, uh, in Spain, all the people over there are so thin. And here you come back, you get off the plane, it looks like cows grazing. You know, yeah. I said, what, what is the problem? And he said, it has some, he felt it had something to do with the soil that the food was grown in. Why certain races are thinner than others. I will tell you, I, I, just from my years and years of experience, yeah. it's a combination of things. One, we're carbohydrate addicted here in America. Two, you're 100% right, the nutritional, um, the, the soil uh, is, is depleted. A carrot today has half the same nutrition as a carrot 40 years ago, even an organic carrot. And three, our mitochondria is messed up, whether from taking antibiotics or also eating foods or eating animals that have been taking an antibiotics or also been eating this thing called glyphosate, which is sprayed on the wheat. So when people say people didn't used to have a, a, a problem with gluten with until glutens, 1997 yeah. Yeah. because they because they spray the machines and they spray the wheat with this supposed anti-fungal called uh, anti-mold thing is glyphosate. Glyphosate makes bugs explode. And it's just <laughs> up around. So if it makes bugs explode. We're not that. What's different. it going to do to us? Exactly. Yeah, you know. So I mean, now now it's you know it is the DDT of our day. The difference is back when the DDT was around, the chemical companies um, did not own every state house. I mean, they're really smart. These evil chemical companies and the ph evil pharma, they buy literally donate to every state assemblyman, every state senator, every yeah. national senator, every national. But you know something? I got to I, I got to tell you something, Rob. I think that in the beginning, years ago. I think mm -hmm. the tobacco companies were innocent. I think the chemical companies were innocent. And here's why I'm going to say that is because they simply put this stuff on the market and went, oh, good, this DDT, it kills these things, right? This is good yeah. for us. And yeah. then after a while, they started seeing the evidence of how it was affecting human beings. And then they weren't willing to admit that maybe we should take it off the market. Right. So, That's right. And, then, then and the same thing was the with profits. cigarettes. It's their, it's their profits. And they're not going to do it. And but when you test your own product, as opposed to what the FDA should do, yeah. which the FDA should be an independent thing, where actually the FDA is completely funded by big pharma. I mean completely funded. Uh, just when you submit to do a new drug of the FDA, yeah. not to bore your listeners to tears, it's $50,000 as part of the submission process. So that is a de facto funding of the FDA. So the FDA is completely funded, and then there's a revolving door between people who work at the FDA and big pharma and big pharma going in the FDA and it's the same thing with the CDC and so the Center mm -hmm. for Disease Control it's the same crap and it's like we no longer have a government that's protecting the people they're protecting big business and like while I don't think it's a hundred percent evil I, I do think what happens is you have an abuse in the system because the system is there to be abused and yeah. so whenever you, you don't have any firewalls anymore yeah so I mean that's why people vote for guys like Donald Trump because they're going hey let's yeah. change something I'm willing to burn the house down yeah. and let's make another house. Yeah. Now, you, you let me just, uh, we have a little time left here. Let me just ask you, you, you a lot of times have come out with your political opinion places. Yeah. And that and has mean, gotten you into a lot of trouble. Sometimes I didn't even agree with you. I said, yeah, what's, I what's wrong with Rob? <laughs> you know? I, I'm a, con I mean, look, I, I'm a, you know, I like the, uh, not the controversy, but I, I mean, I like to take the other issue. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to make fun of Donald Trump. You can watch it five days a week. I want to make fun of the people making fun of Donald Trump. Yeah. Because that's, that's more, it's, it's tougher. It's, you know, you know, it's, it's more, <laughs> you know, but, but I, I like the opposite. Well, I, I have to admit that Trump is like shooting fi fish in a barrel. It is. I, yeah. I, I like making fun of Hillary, you know, because, or, or, or Trump supporter. I mean, I mean, uh, people who hate Trump. Because like for me, a Bernie Sanders supporter is a good fodder for exactly. comedy. I mean, like, yeah. what, was he going to be president for six months? What was the plan? There? Mind you, we're not sitting here saying Trump is wonderful or anything like that. What no. we're saying is, is that the opposition also has its faults and we Believe don't. Me, here's what I tell people in yeah. my live shows, Alex, and you should come to one of them one day. Yeah. I tell people, you think Syria cares more about Obama, like more Obama? You, th you think than Trump? You think you, people in Syria are saying, people in Syria are saying, we miss the days where we were being bombed by a tolerant and well-spoken president. <laughs> you know, come on, let's get real. That's why, like, you know, I, and, and look, it's fun to make fun of Hillary because she takes no personal responsibility for anything. I really can't stand her or her husband. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like her, and and Bill was getting to me after a while because there was a kind of a sense of, I I can seduce anybody. You know, I'm not talking about sexually. I'm talking about his seductive quality, and I got yeah. a little tired of that seductive quality. 
Um, you know, there were a lot of other people I wish had run for president. Uh, I yeah. wish Biden I mean, had I, run for president. I would have voted for him in a heartbeat. You know, I'm from San Francisco. You know, I'm the most liberal guy ever. You and me, the yeah. same. You know, I was for, you know, for equality and race and gay rights and, and everything. I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, these are our friends and family, yeah. brothers and sisters right. and parents. Right. So I'm all for that. But at the same time, I got to say, like, you know, when Hillary Clinton says, hey, if the ele- you know, half, you can't say half American population voted for Trump because they're racist. You can't say half, maybe a third. You can say a third. You can't say yeah. half. Yeah. You know, and I, and I said, like, Hillary Clinton had the audacity to say last week, hey, if the election was held October 27th, I'd be your president. I said, yeah, well, you know, if the Super Bowl ended in the third quarter, Atlanta'd be the champion. <laughs> If I was the same size I was when I was a baby, my dick would look huge. <laughs> Where does it end, Alex? You know, so in a way, that's more of an interesting place to go. I just played Boston, the Wilbur Theater, in front of a thousand people. Yeah, well, the most liberal place you've ever met. And I was talking about your, you know, the, the the Nazi rally where they shut down the Nazis. I said there were forty-two people who were Nazis there, and they they had the decency to call themselves Nazis. They weren't saying they were. They weren't trying to be something they weren't. They're Nazis. They were, said, don't shut them down. Talk to them. Listen to them. And that was great to hear the mayor of Boston say, we don't have racism in Boston. Yes, you have racism in Boston. It's Boston. Yeah. So not this part of Boston. you got to go four blocks over here to have racism. Well, I know you have money things to deal with there at the, at the uh, uh, Snyder Mance, as it were. Yes, yes. Uh, and, uh, but before you go, let's let everybody know that tomorrow, which is Friday, uh, the, uh, yeah. the, what's the date? The 29th, I guess, tomorrow? Tonight, it, tonight at midnight. It, tonight at midnight. You can turn on Netflix and you can see how many episodes are there. There are eight. eight? I saw eight. It's, yeah. It's eight half hour movies. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's fun. It's fun. Thank you very I, much. We, we love the first batch and we haven't finished the second batch yet, but it, it, it lives up to the first batch. Thank you. And, but, you know, and, thank and you, your, but, and your wife is amazing on that show. Oh, thank Just you. Just amazing. Everybody. And you're, really and you're, She's but the, the downs part of it is you're terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> I know I just have to put up with that part. If yeah. You can get through that. You get to my wife. The kitty kid even reads her lines better. I know she's beautiful. I, I love it. It's just an excuse to get my family in there. Yeah. Yeah. It's a home movie is what it is. Yeah. It's, it's been fun, but we, we spent nine months writing it and I'm really proud of uh, the shows. Ooh. The last episode, you have to see Ennio Morricone does the score. It's unbelievable. Oh, really? Yeah, oh. I mean, it's just like, you know, I got a 95. How did, how, how'd you get Ennio Morricone to write? I called him. You called him. He, I called him. His son speaks a little bit of English. He speaks no English. Absolutely none. Ennio Morricone, uh, in case people don't know, good and the bad and the ugly, once upon a time in America, Bugsy, I could go on and on. Probably the Tarantino. greatest. Uh, Hateful Eight, which he won the Academy Award for. Yeah. And uh, he's just the greatest composer. He's just right from the heart. And so yeah. you hear the last 10 minutes of this thing and you realize why I, you know, spent so much money on it. And it was so worth it because yeah. the last 10 minutes is all his beautiful music. Well, so, it, 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 it's a fun show. And the one question I guess I, I've always wanted to ask somebody who's in the position you're in. You play a real asshole. Yes. And it's called <laughs> Real Rob. And yet I don't know Real Rob as that kind of asshole. All right. <laughs> What, but isn't it more fun? Is it the comedian in you that says, "I don't care how people perceive it, what people perceive of me. This is a good character." That's the you know I get offered quite, quite, I get asked questions a lot. That's the best question I've been asked in, in years. The truth of it is, I mean, it would be so it's so egocentric to make make myself look good. I think it's way funnier. I mean, the best compliment I've ever gotten in this business was the real genius of Saturday Night Live is this guy named Jim Downey. And he said he was the writer. He's been the, he wrote Jane, you ignorant slut. He's the guy yeah. been there for years and years. And um, he still does all the political stuff there, all the best stuff that you liked. Yeah. He writes. And um, he said to me, Rob Schneider never wasted time trying to look cool. I never cared how I looked. Yes. I wanted to be funny. Yeah. And like, it's just funnier playing an a hole. I mean, my favorite guys, I mean, the best sitcoms ever were just terrible people, despicable, terrible people. And that's one I wanted to do an updated. Faulty Towers, music. Faulty it's Towers, a, yeah, a yeah. perfect example of that. It's Faulty Towers, being the biggest asshole you can be, cheating, lying, stealing, if you can. And it's a reverse. I love Lucy. My wife is Lucy, and I'm. I'm sorry, my wife is Ricky Ricardo, and I'm Lucy. And, and I'm the biggest prick, Basil Faulty, 
Lucy you've ever found. <laughs> and that's fun for me. And if you get yeah. to the end, you'll really see yeah. it. It comes to a great place. Well, it's terrific. And I, I'm, I'm so happy for you. And I was talking to Bubs the other day. He said he went into a, like a Whole Foods with you and you were mobbed. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and he said, I didn't, you know, I know he's, he's done a lot, but I didn't think he'd be mobbed. And I said, well, you know, I mean, he's very recognizable, but, um, I'm the, the same size I am on TV as I am in person. The, the thing that bothered me most, and I got to tell you this because I'm protective of you because I like you, okay? You. I love uh, you. Is the only time I ever hate Family Guy is when they kid you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it because I thought it was a kind of a cheap shot. Yeah, I, I, felt, well, I felt the same way and because you're my friend. I was very protective and I said, I don't like that. Oh, Fuck Seth you. MacFarlane. They are, Orville no. sucks. I, I, yeah. I'll tell you, the thing about it is, like, if you're lucky enough to get into a position, and I've been around long enough now, whereas, I've be, you know the, you know what Ann Beats of Saturday Night Live said, yeah. you can only be avant-garde so long, and then you become guard. And, you know, we've become guard, yeah. Alex. Yeah. And, and you have to just kind of accept it and uh, just hope that the, if you're lucky enough to still do what you love and make funny stuff while you can, it's a window. I mean, Faulty Towers is 13 episodes. I don't know how many... I've already done 16 of these. I don't know how many I'll do. But yeah. if I never work again, I feel blessed and uh, I've been very lucky. And I, I just, I, what I want to do now in my life is introduce my wife to people because I think she's wonderfully talented and thank you for your kind words about her. I just want to do what I love and, and spend time and talk to people like you that I love and admire for mm -hmm. years. You were a supporter to all of us back in the day. And you know, I was talking to Dana Carvey about you. I was talking to... Uh, you know, to Larry Bubbles Brown, and it said, you know, hey man, Alex is still out there. We love him, and it's like he made a difference in our careers when we needed you. Yeah. We well, you, somebody, you'll all, you'll all be invited to the funeral. <laughs> That's many years away, buddy, but hey, uh, I love you, and I'll always be there for you, man, anytime. Hey, can we man. do you, this? You were, can we... you were a supporter from way back, and I got to tell you, man, that meant the world to us. It really did. Yeah. From Bobcat to, okay. you know, Robin Williams and all the guys who you were you know had on and, and you know all the guys and a lot of them are gone now man but but we'll never forget it thank yeah, you alex yeah uh, but I, I and i hope we can do this again soon because this yeah. has been really good because you you're you're one of the better people to talk to because you've got a lot of depth you'll talk politics you, you know you talk about a whole bunch of things and i Thanks. i really would like to do it maybe another month or something i'll give you a, a, absolutely well, why don't you watch the rest of the episode i'll watch the rest of them yeah because like the, i'm so proud of like especially the last uh, episodes 37 minutes they're all half hour movies yeah but the last one is remarkable i mean i just was really proud well, of well it. we're, we're about halfway through them now you know okay. i just got them yeah. last week and you know my wife had to watch all her little things you know her netflix binges and yeah, i said well hey, here's a good netflix binge hey rob thank you for being with us uh, anytime yeah. alice let's talk soon okay I'll, I'll, after you talk after you're done with these we'll talk next week come on okay okay well i will i'll uh, i'll uh, well, i'll stick around after this and i'll you know we'll talk we'll anyway play. uh uh let's bring this to an end ladies and gentlemen rob schneider his show starts on netflix at midnight tonight yeah you can do it years and still talking this is gabnet the great american broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before okay all righty let me see here let me uh, okay there we go all right that was an interview we did about a, a year and a half ago with rob schneider maybe a year ago i don't know because we were talking about some things and i went gee we i wasn't talking to, I, I, I i was surprised okay but anyway so that was it. Okay. It's time for me to go to the uh, phones here, or to the uh, Skype phones. It's an old way of putting it. Uh, and our number, if you don't know how to get a hold of us, just go over to gabnet.net. Okay. Gabnet.net is the, um, is the, is the um, um, place to go. When you go over there, you'll see the program, so you don't have to miss a minute of it uh, in video. And then uh, it gives you a phone number if you don't want to use Skype or it tells you how to get Skype. And if you have Skype, it also has a button you can push that will automatically dial us, okay? Okay, the first guy up, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I don't even have to punch him in because he gets his little number one spot there. 
Yeah, but is you want to punch Meyer. me out. That's uh, what? <laughs> you'll punch me out, yeah. but you won't punch me in. I won't punch you in. I'll just punch you out. Hello there, yeah. Phil. How are you this evening? All right. Cool down a little bit here, but it's yeah. still hot as hell. Uh, Charlie Wallace is calling, and he will pop in probably in that second spot, if I remember correctly, uh, from last night. Uh, there we go. Uh, he'll. <laughs> there we go. We got him in the second spot. All right. <laughs> now let's see who's going to call in the third spot because I don't. Who was in it last night? Uh, Josh. Uh, actually, I can tell you it was. Yeah, it was Josh Wheeler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, uh, we we can fill that one up. Um, so anyway, I just felt like rerunning the uh, Schneider interview because it's thirty-seven minutes. I'm feeling a little marginally better right now. Oh, here comes Josh. He's taking up. Everybody's there taking up their same. I'm not going. I'm, I've got to call it. Nobody else can take my space. Here we go. <laughs> there he is. Okay. Everybody's in place now. Hello, Josh. Hello. You're back in the number three spot. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. But you'll always be number one with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's so. good, too. So anyway, so, yeah. So anyway, so I was feeling a little tired today, and I figured I would run that. I didn't want to talk for a half hour, so. Uh, but uh, I'm, yeah, I'm feeling a little tired, but not like last night. I'm feeling a little better today. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I got a gift for you. It's yeah. It's a no fill Friday. Do, do you think we care? Uh, yeah, uh, it's I mean, a gift. you act you act like it's important that it's going to be a fill free Friday. Yeah, well, when I quite do that. frankly, there are people out there watching this program now who are putting it on their calendar <laughs> exactly. with a, with a, with a, a, and, and with a heart. Okay, I, well, that's why I mention it so that out of deference to other callers that uh, are afraid to talk to a Republican. Uh, you know, I let them know that it's it's free to be a snowflake, and you can call in on we're Friday. Not, we're not afraid to talk. They're not afraid to talk to a Republican. We have. They to, just don't want to hear. Wait anything. a minute. Wait a minute. We have a Patrick on the show. He is a very reasonable Republican, <laughs> as opposed reasonable to you. As, as opposed to you, we love him. <laughs> yeah. You know. Now, you just ran an interview of a guy that feels almost exactly like I do about yeah. Donald, Tr Donald Trump. Yeah, it, well, he doesn't, he, he, not exactly. He said that his whole uh, take on Donald Trump was that uh, he didn't want to make, he didn't want to make jokes about him because it's too easy. Well, now, that's I don't, true. I don't know if that's a put down or that's a positive. There's, uh, there's Jeff Stein, ladies and gentlemen, he's joined us. And now Charlene Martinez is trying to join us. So, um, uh, Charlene, let's see here. Let me uh, go to the, um, I've got to go to this thing, and then i got to go to number four, and number five, rather. And you are in the number five spot. There we go. Okay. Is she going to come up? There she is. There's Charlene Martinez. Uh, so, uh, wearing her glasses tonight, by the way. Yeah. Did you steal that from uh, my grandma? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Hi, Jeff. How are you? We haven't seen you in a couple of nights. I know. I've been traveling around a little bit. Where are you now? Are you back home? I'm at home right now. I was in Massachusetts yeah. today, and yesterday I was in New York. So. Wow. Okay. Um, well, anyway, so I, I'm feeling a little bit better today. Still tired. I think... This has a lot to do with pollen because my I've been having a little trouble breathing today, and it's not a terrible pollen day, but I think it may be just a certain kind of pollen that gets to me. Because, uh, but anyway, I slept nine hours last night, and I've been tired all day. How do you like that one? You overslept. I, I think I overslept. Yeah, that that yeah. yeah. Maybe I should undersleep. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. You know, because if I undersleep and then I feel tired, I know I've got a reason, <laughs> you know. So, yeah. um, that's the, that's so the I feel like Alice from the Brady Bunch now. You feel like I'm who? In the middle. <laughs> you feel like who? Alice? She's in the Alice middle. Alice from the Brady Bunch. She was always in the middle. Yeah. She was always in the middle. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. Well, it's when we get to the uh, to the next panel, and there's eight spaces there that we get the Brady Brady Bunch uh, thing. Yeah. Uh, if we didn't have Josh there, it could be the Beatles album cover right now. You know, um, mm -hmm. so, there's a lot of things we remember. Uh, anyway. Um, no, you you were talking. You know, I mean, I you know, I like you too, Phil, and I, I like I like uh, 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 Rob. He's always been a decent guy, you know. Uh, most of us are. No, <laughs> not most of you are. Trump's a fuck. He's a real fuck. I got to tell you, he's a piece of shit fuck. He's mm. he he never had a reputation of being a nice guy in New York City. Yeah. Yeah. So he's a prick. Now, well, maybe you think that's, that's true, a, like most New Yorkers. Maybe you I think mean. that's a good quality for a president, but I don't. Okay? I, th I think you can't survive in New York unless you're a prick. Oh, you can't even park. You can't park your car unless you're a prick. You can't do anything. You can't, you can't get a taxi cab unless you're uh, a let prick. Me, uh, let me name some New Yorkers who aren't pricks, okay? I don't think Bloomberg's a prick. No, but he's a billionaire. He can no, afford not to be a prick. Yeah, well, of course. Trump has to be a publicly, prick because he's publicly. not a billionaire. Okay? Well, <laughs> he got it, uh, you know, he earned it privately. You know, Bloomberg. Uh, he didn't earn it privately. He got it from his fucking father. Hmm. Yeah, he got a million dollars from his father. No, he got more than that. He got more than that. <laughs> he got yeah. much more than that, according to the, uh, according to the information that's been able to be delved uh, into about where he got his initial thousand dollar investment from his father and then his father kept pull, putting in more and more money although his father didn't like him investing in New York City yeah in, in Manhattan he felt if you know uh, uh, daddy Trump's purview was Queens and he felt that that, that was a better place to spend your I money. thought it was Brooklyn but, uh, Maybe it was Brooklyn. Queens? I don't know. Queens anywhere there were, Queens. anywhere yeah. there were. Well, that's where you live. But, anywhere uh, there were poor people, he could take advantage of. That was not a nice family. Those are some real pricks. Those people. I mean, his father was supposed to be a real piece of work. Yeah. And to show you Number how much nine. he how much he loved Donald, he sent him off to a military school yep. to get rid of him. Yeah. So it's his father's fault. You know, oh, you, oh, so he's a victim. He's a victim. Wait a minute. Blaming, he, he, blaming he, the son. It, it's his father's fault that what, Phil? Uh, that he's a prick. Oh, okay. So you admit he's a prick. Uh, yeah, we're, we're all pricks. No, I'm you not know, a prick. Except Charlene. I'm not a prick. Charlene isn't a prick. <laughs> Charlie's a really nice guy. You're not a prick. Josh, <laughs> I'll include Josh. Uh, Jeff, I know personally, is not a prick. And and Josh has always seemed a stand up guy to me. You're the only one in this group that seems to be a prick. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, well, uh, your reputation uh, preceded you. Uh, th there's a few people. Well, that there, there was uh, there was a character I played on the radio. No, 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 no. With, with you know some other ones. What? Oh, you want me to tell you? Yeah, sure. All right. I don't know, and you know it might be interesting if you. I was always going to save this for a private conversation, but uh, it would be interesting to know what ended up going on between you, uh, John Means, and uh, um, uh, Marty uh, Cohen. No, nothing. No, nothing. Why do these guys have a have a hard on for you? Uh, I don't think John Means has one oh, in this day and age because I've talked to people who talked to him recently, and they say he says hi. You know, I tried to. I asked him to come on to the show, and he wouldn't do it. Why, so why are you I, inviting I, people onto my show? Because you don't have that many callers, and I thought you'd enjoy it. Well, I mean, I, John Means, who called himself Doctor Gonzo, was a comedian way back when. He was actually the first comedian I ever had on my radio show. Yeah, yeah, and well, I, almost I, all I, his publicity photos are mine. Yeah, and I'm shooting them again in September. Yeah, and I uh, I always like John. I don't know what if he was saying something nasty about me. I don't know what no, it could have possibly. He been. didn't say anything nasty. He just didn't, said, "Hey, we didn't leave on good terms. We we didn't leave on bad terms. I don't remember that." Oh, all right. Yeah, and so far as Marty Cohen is concerned, the only 
problem I had with Marty Cohn was he became he was a comedian who got uh, a lot he got of, a radio show. A, a lot of well, he got a lot of notoriety from my show. Yeah, and then he went out and got his own radio show opposite me, at which he failed miserably. Yeah, well, but, you know, I told him I said you're a uh, you're very competitive, and uh, I said uh, you know. And and that and I'm sure he, you didn't mean anything by it. No, I, I felt that was some sort of a betrayal, because yeah. he wasn't a, he wasn't a radio guy. That was the big mistake that radio station made. He, well, he's not a comedian anymore, <laughs> you know. And he he you know and he was an okay comedian. He wasn't a great yeah. comedian, but he was an okay comedian. But I used to have him on all the time because I liked Marty. And all of a yeah. sudden, one day he does this thing about uh, doing a show opposite mine in the morning. Over a K yeah. fog, and I felt that was a kind of betrayal. Yeah, you know. but you know, I mean, this because he this would have enough. never, he would have never gotten that job if I hadn't had him on my show. That's true, but you know, I mean, uh, you know, that's the way life works. And you know, you, so you know, this hope is that the, this is, is going to get this, a piece uh, of the look. Action. There are going to be people who think I'm a prick just simply because I didn't have him on the radio show. Yeah, or I did, or I had him on once and I didn't ask them back. Yeah. Uh, these two guys are two guys who should have been glad that they did my radio show on any number of occasions. They were. I don't. I don't know what yeah. happened. Uh, John wouldn't tell me. Well, I have no idea. You know, because he uh, he just simply disappeared. I think he went to the Midwest somewhere, and we never he heard. He became from him again. an English professor mm -hmm. at a community college. Yeah, and then he bought a uh, a, a restaurant and turned it into a comedy club in. I think in Des Moines. Yeah. I had a comedy club I turned into a restaurant. Uh, it was uh, the opposite thing. But, uh, no, uh, and people don't know really who we're talking about because these are two comedians who really didn't make the big cut. Okay? Yeah, no. Uh, no. Uh, uh, although I, John used to open for, uh, who was it, Huey Lewis in the News? And, uh, yeah, but that, you know, how long ago was that? Oh, it was ancient. You yeah. know. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, Yui is fun. Uh, yeah. I used to give him a bad time about things. Yeah. And, uh, and I, uh, I used to call it to say, well, you know, the thing people don't realize is that's one of the best hair pieces in the business. Really? I didn't know Now, that. of course it wasn't a hair piece. Of course, no. that was <laughs> Yui Lewis's real hair. But I kept saying, what a hair piece. Boy, is that... A is that a great Frick. hair piece? I kept doing that on the air. You know, uh, I used to call him Huey Lewis and the hair piece. You know, things like that. Yeah. That is a funny bit. So, so one night I'm at a restaurant in Marin County. Yeah. And across the room is Huey. Yeah. And I'm, I'm sitting there and all of a sudden I notice he's sitting over there and he looks at me. And he goes and grabs the top of his hair and starts pulling on it. <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. He had a good sense of humor. Yeah. 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 Uh, you know, I mean, I mean, I kidded people. I gave people a bad time. But, uh, you know, and especially if you all of a sudden you decide you're going to be my competitor, you know, yeah. I'm going to start, you know. If people, well, if, I, I, I never would go out of my saying, way to bring him up, Marty Cohen well, up. But I would, you, you, if people yeah. mentioned him, I would then, you know. Well, I guess you you had that run in with Jack Swanson at KGO, and uh, and it was well, you know, tell the story. Tell wait a minute. Tell wait a minute. Tell tell the story, because okay. uh, uh, I I was looking to get a job a couple of years back, and Jack Swanson took over. At uh, where where did he take over? I can't remember. He, well, he was KGO for years, and then they fired him, and then he came back for about a week and a half, right? Yeah. yeah. And so I figured I'd just write him a note and say, "Hey, Jack, you know I'm available. Remember me? You know, uh, we were competitors. Whatever." He writes me back and he says, "I will never forgive you for the time that you sent somebody over to my radio station, which was KFOG, I think at the time." Was it KFOG? Yeah. yeah. And you, and that's where Marty was. Well, and you, he, you had this guy who was your stunt guy did something. I can't remember what he supposedly did, and I will never forgive you for that. 
And I wrote him a letter back saying, hey, you know, it was, I don't know exactly, I can't remember the incident. I said, but whatever he did, let me in retrospect apologize, not because you're running a radio station, I don't expect to get a job after that, but just because it was all in the spirit of competition. And and, 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 and I meant and I meant were. no I meant no harm towards you or towards the people you worked with. And he wrote me back a very nice note and said all is forgiven. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I saw him post a voodoo doll of you. Yeah, probably on, uh, yeah, on his <laughs> Facebook, Facebook site. site. <laughs> but you know, I mean, and I uh, I you know in the high in, in in when you're competing, you just do yeah. things. You you you're in la la land. You're in crazy land. You know. And, yeah. and you do things. I mean, uh, you, do I hold it against Howard because for the past almost 30 years, he said I stole his act from him, my act from him, when it wasn't even possible? Yeah. You know, uh, we, we know who stole from who. Uh, yeah. But, you know, I, I understand why Howard does that. It's part of the act, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, I... I I, I minded it only because it it denied my creativity, you know, to say that I stole from him. Sure. You know, which it I diminishes never, your yeah. actual uh, work. So, so I was a little mad at that, but I understood it. You know, I understood that, you know, if he said it in the in, in competition. Now, I finally met up with Howard because he got mad at me one day on his radio show and I was in another studio because I had said something about some one of his guys. Remember, uh, what was his name? The guy... Uh, the, the guy said something no, about Wiener. Wiener. Well, he went out to Wiener's, uh, Wiener's press conference where Wiener was just saying, I apologize, you know, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have done this, it's horrible. And he did some Baba Booey thing to, to Wiener yeah. at that thing. And I, I kind of oh. got on his case and said, you know, this really isn't right. I said... God knows this guy, you know, his life is over. You know, he, he, yeah. he chances are he doesn't have a marriage any longer. You know, whatever has happened to this guy, whatever prank is being pulled on him, he pulled on himself, you know. And yeah. I said, at that point, we kind of leave these people alone. And I thought it was just in bad taste. Well, Howard then lays into me. How dare you say it's in bad taste? I, he did a wonderful job, blah, blah, blah. And then uh, the next thing I know, his producer, Fa Fa Fooey or whatever the name is, uh, Baba Booey, walks into my studio and says, Howard would like you to come down and be on his show. And I said, if Howard wants to talk to me, he has to come here. So the next thing I know... All his TV cameras, because he's got a TV studio, and there everybody is coming down and following him down the hall into my studio. And I figure, oh fuck, what do I do now? And he walks in, and he he's standing there in the doorway, and I stand up and I go, "Hi, Howard. Always wanted to meet you." And I put out my hand and I shake his hand. And he was putty in my hands after that. He I, couldn't, I saw a he, video. Yeah. I, he, I saw a video that he made, and yeah. I don't watch him at all, but I, I happen to have seen it. Yeah, it's, and it's online. he said, I went up there to do battle, and he was such a nice guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I disarmed him yeah. completely. And uh, we had a very nice discussion, and I explained why I felt the way I did, and he explained very, all very civil. And then Howard yeah. went crawling back to his studio and then, of course, made that admission that when um, his, uh, his newswoman, uh, uh, what's her name? Robin. Robin. Robin G Givens. Is it Givens, is it? Robin. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. isn't Robin, you know, Robin Givens is the actress who married Mike Tyson. Um, yeah. Robin. No, but this one is Robin also something. Yeah, it's Robin something. Anyway, yeah. Robin uh, said to him, you were so nice to him. He says, well, you, I walked in. He said... You know, uh, nice to meet you, Howard. And and he said, I just I couldn't go after him. He was just too nice. Yeah. And and I I had done what I had to do. You know, it completely disarmed him. Yeah. You know, but uh, you know I I have my issues with him. You know, but fuck it, it is what it is. You know, 
He's become tremendously successful, and I've, I'm, I'm punching out this little piece of shit here every night, you know? Well, can you get him to pay royalties for the acts that he's stolen from you? Well, you know, he, <laughs> he, he stole, what he stole was somewhat my attitude and what I would do. I mean, right. I, I would always tell stories about myself, right. because I find myself one of the most interesting people in the world. And um, uh, would you mind not moving the camera like crazy, Charlene? <laughs> it's driving us nuts. First your landscape and then your portrait. Make your mind up. <laughs> anyway. What did that guy have last night, the guy with the crazy round glasses? He had a stand or something? He was trying to get it to stand, yeah, but it never went sideways. Anyway, where he, was he? He used that? tape. So, I mean, um, <laughs> you know, um, uh, 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 Howard, uh, Howard, I can, I never had heard Howard, and people kept saying, "Have you listened to Howard? He's he stole from you," and everybody was kept saying this for a couple of years. Yeah. And then they started running him out of San Jose, and I figured, you know, I didn't want to listen because I I, I was afraid it was going to bother me. And I listened to him, and as I listened to him, I went, my God, he had to have listened to me when he was growing up, you know? He had to have been influenced by what I do, because he's doing what I do. And um, uh, at that point, I realized that, you know, I, I couldn't fight it. Yes, Charlene? All right. Um, since you brought Howard up, I didn't. Um, I happened to, you know, hear him one day there, and he was talking about the, you know, end of PLJ. Mm -hmm. And he said uh, he used to listen to PLJ when he was growing up, and he wanted to work on PLJ and all this stuff. So I know that you always say that, and I said, I bet Alex is right, because he probably listened to you at night on PLJ. Because I think the, the years that he was talking about, it would have been the years that you were on PLJ. Well, it would have to be. Because, I mean, to. he was in New York where he lived in Long Island. Yeah, know, because said, if right? it were a little bit later, even a matter of three or four years after after I started there, uh, he would mm -hmm. be too old to refer to that. He'd already, I think, probably be, have gotten into radio or something like that. So. But, but anyway, uh, you know, I mean. about some uh, people. I, the only thing I, I, I Bob don't. Bob Grant, you know, he yeah. gave Bob Grant props, but not until he passed away. Yeah. So, yeah, if know, I, I guess I have away. to, yeah, if I die, which could be any minute now, uh, I'm not lightheaded, to, I'm not lightheaded nice tonight, say it so you can hear it. I'm not lightheaded tonight though, but you know, what the hell, anyway, give it time, give it time, Alex, one more you know, but you know, what I was going to say is oh, that, uh, yeah, he, um, uh, he, he, he admitted to somebody I know privately that he was influenced by me. How could he not be? Yeah. Uh, every kid, you know, look, I grew up in that uh, uh, 68 to 72. That's when I was in high school. And it, between WMCA and uh, WPLJ, every kid who listened to radio was influenced by you. Yeah. The, when I got my first uh, gig at uh, WRCC, Rockland Community College Radio, uh, the, one of the things that got me the gig was the fact that I picked you up at WPLJ one morning, took you, took you home and had breakfast with you. And when I told them that I did that, I got the morning spot. Also, nobody else wanted it. <laughs> so, well, <laughs> that yeah. unfortunately, and, that's and not, Lenny Bronstein, Lenny Bronstein vouched for me. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, that's not the way I got jobs because morning on regular radio was the choice spot. You know. Yeah, uh, not yes. when you're broadcasting to uh, through a PA system to a uh, empty. Oh, when uh, I when I was when I was I'll be with you in a second, Charlene. <laughs> when I was uh, at San Francisco City College, uh, we used to do broadcasting, and it went over the PA system in the cafeteria. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. That yeah, was our to. yeah yeah big, big same thing. <laughs> big time radio. <laughs> yes, yeah. uh, Charlene. No, you know. When Howard Stern came on and I heard about him, like, I forget when he came on or whatever in New York. Like, I, like, I had to listen to him. And then I started listening to him. And I always wondered, Alex, why did I want to listen to him? And then when you started saying that he stole your act and everything, 
I said, that's why, because I always loved you when I was a you know, real young kid on PLJ yeah. that I listened to you at night. And I said, that's why I was able to want to Here, listen to here's, him, here's the because he stole yeah. your act. Here's the problem with saying that somebody stole your act, okay? Uh, but he did, though. There are a couple of comedians I know who Robin Williams would routinely steal from. Okay. Well, well, he used to pay some guys. He used to pay no, Monty. No, uh, he would, and uh, when he was finally called on it, he would pay. Right. Okay. Um, there were some people who had to actually Kramer. almost. Kramer. Well, uh, Kramer he liked. Jeremy yeah. Kramer, who's another comedian, folks. I mean, we're not. Unfortunately, we're not talking about people. You know, a lot of heard people of know. <laughs> I mean, Jeremy Kramer is one of the funniest guys alive and probably should have been one of the biggest Stars alive, comedy stars alive. But He's, he was writing for uh, Curb Your Enthusiasm, no, and he had some spots. No, he on there, wasn't too. running. He wasn't writing. writing. No, he wasn't writing for Curb. He wasn't Enthusiasm. writing. Didn't no. he write the Bagel one? No, no. If you ever look at that show, it doesn't have written by listed on there. Oh, well, maybe he was just one of the. No. All all those shows are ad libbed, and they're ad libbed with a, a, a kind of a, a plot general line idea yeah. that he. Larry David creates. Okay. Anyway. Well, he was in the one that uh, he, he was in one episode, but he didn't write it. No. 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 Oh. But anyway, what are we arguing about? We're arguing about somebody. People out there don't even know who we're talking about. You know. Uh, but Jeremy is one of those guys who who should have made. It. But there were people. There were guys like Larry Bubbles Brown, for instance, or uh, Stephen Pearl is another one. Uh, Warren Thomas is yet another one. I knew comics who said that whenever Robin walked into a club, they would immediately get off stage so he wouldn't steal their material. Uh, mm -hmm. Other people who said that when they heard Robin laugh in the back of the room, they knew that that was going to be on The Tonight Show on Monday. You know? Uh, the problem with people either insinuating that you stole from them or using and lifting somebody else's material and not giving them credit for it is terrible because especially to these comics who were starting out, they would get up on stage, they would do a piece of material that Robin had stolen from them, did on The Tonight Show, but they figured, hey, it's my joke, I'm not going to give it up, and then they would go on stage and do it and somebody would yell out, oh, you stole that from Robin Williams. Because whoever is the biggest dog in the bunch who then says I stole from he stole from me or whatever so for years you know I had a problem with a lot of America who didn't know me because in, especially in the days when I was in radio you were on in a market by market basis you weren't on nationally and so I was in San Francisco and it was a big fucking deal but here comes you know uh, Howard Stern and uh, quite frankly he doesn't know how to go after me in San Francisco because and he couldn't I still got bigger ratings than he did uh, uh, in fact CBS had to buy out my contract in order to move Howard Stern onto my station so that, that's how, how, how much Howard wanted me out of the way you know so. Can you imagine if you ended up getting syndicated when they wanted to do that? Well, uh, well at that well, station in DC. Well, uh, I was offered uh, 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 um, a job. Uh, the, the guy who made Howard a big hit was uh, what's his name? Uh, Mel Carmazan. Carm Mel Carmazan, who uh, went to the wall for for Howard. He, you know, he's the guy who told the FCC, "Fuck you! I'll pay the fine." Okay. <laughs> You know, uh, you're not going to tell my station what we're going to say and what we can't say. And uh, Mel, then when I was uh, in San Francisco and on the air and they were bringing Howard in, they brought him into San Jose immediately to get me out of the way. They offered me a big job in Washington, D.C. and offered me syndication. And we flew to, my, my business manager and I flew to uh, Washington, D.C. or to, it, it wasn't Washington, it was that right outside of Washington. WJFK, if people in that part of the world probably know that, those call letters. 
Uh, and um, we went down there. We had dinner, had lunch with them. Uh, not with Mel, but with the guy who was running the station. Uh, they told me that they would bring me in. They would offer me X number of dollars, and they were offering me about the same amount of money I was making in San Francisco. And But they, on top of that, they sweetened the pie by saying, we'll syndicate you, like we do with Howard. And so I went, cool, you know, that'd be great. But then I got a guilty complex, because it would have meant I would have had to gotten out of my contract in San Francisco. And uh, Mel wouldn't let me, wouldn't even offer me the job till I quit in San Francisco because he didn't want it to, you know, he didn't want to get sued for stealing somebody from somebody else. It was a very, I found out later on because I got to know him when I went to Sirius XM that Mel Karmazin was one of the most principled guys in the business. But I had always heard he was a, you know, he was an <laughs> Alex Bennett. He was a prick. Anyway, so I didn't take the job. And that's maybe one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in my career. I got a picture of the guy that took the job. You want to see it? I know who it was. I know you know who it was, but they don't know who it was. You have Hang a picture on. of him e easily available to you? Yes. Why? Why do you have a picture uh, of this? This is the guy who not? they gave it's the job to and how they went from me to this guy. <laughs> Anybody know who that is? It's G. Gordon oh Liddy. God. Yeah. It's G. Gordon Liddy. He got the job I turned down. Oh, my God. See, G. Gordon uh, Liddy. Look, look at the call letters. WJFK. Yeah. Now, right. why does Phil have that picture? Uh, I had a friend that, we used to, that used to listen well, to J., uh, Gordon but, Liddy. Wait a minute. Hold, keep, holding, keep holding that up, and I will... Uh, I will uh, uh, All right. Uh, uh, and... Uh, uh, and uh, my friend had, has passed away since, but uh, he sent he had uh, Gordon Liddy send this to me. The, you and oh, he had him send you a fan uh, yeah. picture. That's yeah, a fan picture. Like yeah, it. yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, anyway, I uh, yeah. I he was Nixon's one of Nixon's men. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, John people. Dean. That was one of the Watergate now guys. Testifying, uh, you know, yeah, every so what's perfect. old is now new. I don't know why yeah. did they, you know, I mean, come on, you know, anything you, they can do to go after Trump, I guess I'm, I'm okay with. But what was the idea of bringing in G. Gordon Liddy? Do you, uh, well, we can bring, John we can bring Josh. a shit show. We can bring Josh in on this. Why John Dean, Josh? Do you have any idea? You had enough of Liddy's picture? Yeah, I've had enough. Yeah, we have enough. <laughs> He's ugly. Uh, I I really don't understand that either. I mean, I think they said something along the lines, or I think their thinking was the idea that you know Dean was the guy who had finally had enough, and you know decided he was going to have some integrity, and you know he wasn't going to you know lie for Nixon or whatever anymore, and you know they wanted to trot that out, but I don't see what good it. You know, would do. Has he testified yet? I mean, did I? Yeah, he testified. Yeah, he I, I don't even remember. I didn't even hear what right. he testified. Which, which shows you like how much. I mean, if I didn't even see it or care, I mean, I would have to think that the you know vast, overwhelmingly of majority of Americans didn't. You know, I mean, didn't give a shit. Right? I understand that they seem to have this plan where they're almost going to do impeachment, like you know, by this slow, painstaking pro They're going to do impeachment by re-election defeat, by basically slowly driven drabbing Trump to death. The death of a know, thousand cuts. The death of a thousand, thousand cuts. cuts. Yes. Okay, yeah. yeah, good word for it. But why the first cut was John Dean? Because <laughs> they got nothing. You know? They got nothing. That was more like a can opener. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think maybe that's okay, and I think they've got plenty there, don't get me wrong. I mean, I I think it's clear this president broke the law, but yeah, the John Dean thing is uh, this is where Democrats typically go wrong. Well, they, I I could bring up to Phil. I don't, I don't know I to mean, Phil uh, your your uh, boy's statements today to uh, what's his name over at uh, ABC oh, Television. Stephanopoulos. Stephanopoulos. Uh, sounds like a character out of a Dr. Seuss book. Mm -hmm. Stephanopoulos. <laughs> Um, well, from Sesame Street. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, the the question I suppose is, um, and, and it it's a good one, and that is, 
Um, you know, what do you think of what the president said today about if he got information from a foreign country again, op stuff, whatever they call it, uh, that he would do it? Well, my uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, how are you going to change what he said? Go ahead. Okay. I believe that Stephanopoulos was trying to get him, uh, trap him. Uh, because uh, Don Jr. was testifying before the Senate uh, basically about this stuff. And what he was trying to do was get uh, Trump to say that what uh, uh, Don Jr. did was wrong. And, and Trump didn't fall for it. That isn't what I heard. Well, now, you may not have heard it. This is my opinion of what happened. Well, you, you really have I'm a, this. I'm a, I'm a great thinker. You have this, this amazing prism. <laughs> that you watch the world through. Where do I get one of those? Because it's called it, reality. Oh, I see. OK. That's yeah. not what it's called. <laughs> not to yeah. a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, basically, though, what he was saying was it's OK to accept help from a foreign government for your campaign. No, he also no. said no, that. No, wait a minute. That, Phil, that is what he said. He said, That's go to huge. the FBI. Why should I go to the FBI? I've never gone to the FBI for anything. <laughs> I, I heard later today that he said it depends on, uh, you know, it depends on what they tell you. you well, know? well and, he'll uh, always he walk. He says if it's illegal yeah. stuff, he'll, he'll, he'll he, it. he walked it back, Phil. But that oh, isn't what he know. said initially. No, initially. You know, uh, and I'm, I'm any sorry. Any help from a foreign country is illegal. Uh, and I, you know, I'm not so sure. Yes, that it it's is illegal. Uh, it's accepting. It's accepting money. No, I think, from no, a foreign it's country it, or it, things it, of value. Well, things of value is like value. well, uh, he didn't use the information, information, so it couldn't have been of value. Uh, and and so now the Democratic Congress is trying to pass a uh, a law stating that it is going to be illegal to get these kinds of things from a foreign government, but. It, was it illegal? Al K, by the way, just it? wrote, uh, oh, no, the entrapment wine. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I mean, every every uh, uh, person that Mueller, uh, an American that Mueller has uh, has indicted or uh, is uh, it was due to entrapment, you know. Oh, I think I met with the Russians four times. No, you did it five. So you lied and you go into prison, you know. Yeah, yeah, and that's uh, you know, I, if that's, I remember correctly, uh, they actually went to prison for some financial misdeeds as well. Well, no, that was not. Uh, uh, who who was uh, the uh, first chief of staff that uh, that he and his son uh, had some problems? It was a general. It wasn't Kelly. It was uh, wasn't Kelly. No, I don't think it was Kelly. Uh, but there was a, a, a general. That uh, got uh, trapped in, in this entrapment thing and uh, uh, basically ruined his life uh, and, and his career, and um, you know. But those are the kinds of things. So th there were some interesting. Good people. Interesting that today yeah. I, I saw, uh, and the wonderful thing is I've been watching CBS and and be yeah. mainly because uh, yeah they cover the election and so on. They cover the the White House. How can you avoid it? But they do it dispassionately. In other words, no, I don't see any real uh, bias there, you know. When they're talking negative about Trump, there's a smile on that uh, Anne Marie Green's face. Well, I, I, you see it, I don't see it. I think it's, it, it, let me put it this way. Compared to MSNBC, it's very oh. refreshing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I watch it. I watch it every morning. So today they ran something that none of the other networks were running which yeah. was the president's White House gathering about his uh, prison Kardashian. reform, his pr 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 prison reform. Yeah, I saw that. Uh, Kardashian. Yeah, it was a good chance for him to, you know, look up Kardashian's dress. Uh, he was. He was. He was purposely not looking at her chest. Yeah. Did you well, notice that? Yeah, it's very hard to miss, though. That's yeah, the problem. <laughs> uh, or the ass, you know. She, she literally is an S. Okay, uh, yeah. but anyway, um, and it was on prison reform, and people were getting up and lauding him for his prison reform, and while she was thanking him for doing certain things, she didn't praise him. 
I think she fell short of that. She didn't want to praise him, but other people were kissing his ass, okay? And I'm wondering, why is he hold, doing this whole thing with prison reform? And then I'm thinking, he's just hedging his bet against the future. <laughs> <laughs> when he's there, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, when he's he's finally somebody's butt boy, he, well, no, he's not going to be anybody's butt boy. Who would want to fuck that? Yeah. <laughs> No. But well, uh, he's got can... he's got Kardashian ass, you know. Uh, you know, you got the blonde hair. You turn him around, and you know, when yeah. you're in prison, you you, yes. you make yeah. uh, yes, concessions. Yes, you, you can right. have the what? you can have the argument about an entrapment, you know, which is fine. I mean, as a kind of a civil libertarian, I have a lot of <clears throat> issues with and you know things like entrapment and sting operations, etc. But still. At least when it comes to politics, though, you at least have to use that evidence as, you know, being pretty clear as the questionable character of some of the people, not just Trump and his family, but the people that they've surrounded themselves with. Because, you know, let's be clear, to catch a predator was entrapment, but it's not as if any of the men who ever rang that doorbell just happened to be walking by and randomly rang the fucking doorbell. I mean, I didn't have didn't the exactly cookies. actually catch innocent people in that so, I mean, I'm just saying, Alex you know, there, there is some validity to it, even if you want to make that argument. Huh. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I mean, I, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I am one of these people that goes, uh, why are they even talking uh, impeachment? I mean, if they started impeachment tomorrow, they wouldn't yeah. even get around to it till after the election. They don't need an impeachment to uh, to create uh, the possibility during the election that he has been uh, tainted. So uh, what what all of this discussion does is it tries to no, weaken. You know, it, look, all you have to do is read his tweets and it taints him. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I and think, there's... and also, 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 there has been uh, some. They're quite worried in the White House. Because they've seen some uh, research that shows that he is not as popular as he was when he ran the last time in those places that got him elected. That he he may well lose Texas. Uh, you know, Joe Biden, uh, Alan Dershowitz, and this uh, is by the way, this is their research. So if they're yeah. going to do anything, when he when he pack, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, Alan Dershowitz said today that if Joe Biden ran, that he would support him. And, uh, well, Alan and that's Dershowitz every reason. That, that, that's that, a, that is very, very nice of Alan Dershowitz to say, but <laughs> of Alan Dershowitz, I must say, I would not like to have Alan Dershowitz to support because he is one of the biggest fucking idiots I've ever heard of in my well, entire life. He's one of your probably, in fact, a pretty good criminal himself. Well, he's one of your Berkeley professor types, but the well, thing is, is that he has been a spokesperson. Was he a Berkeley professor? Was he a Berkeley professor? He is a Berkeley professor. Oh, he is a Berkeley professor? Of what, the School of Idiocy? <laughs> I, I'm not sure which... What's he teaching part? at, 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 at uh, UC? Where is it, UC? Yeah, UC Berkeley. Yeah, UC Berkeley. What's he teaching? Well, home, e home economics? No, no. I, I thought it was uh, the offshoot of the Columbia School of Broadcasting. Uh, apparently, yeah. nowadays he teaches human trafficking and child molestation. Uh, uh, no, Cuba Gooding uh, <laughs> is uh, oh, the no. one that's got that uh, going for well, him. Wait a minute. Now, week. hold on a second. Just lay off Cuba Gooding Jr. for a second. Well, okay? he's no, you're making a joke about him like he's already guilty, and he has said no such thing he's, happened. He says, he's <laughs> and they've got they've got guilty. videotapes. Of this That's woman following him around the club, yeah. pursuing him. Right. Uh, th you know, this could very well be a, to begin with, and I heard about this today, it's like the lead story right on, I don't know, the local news. Uh, Cuba, e, Cuba Gooding Jr. turns himself in. He's been charged with a misdemeanor. And I'm going, what? Mm -hmm. A misdemeanor, and everybody's making such a big deal out of this. Well, how can it be a misdemeanor if she's claiming it's that a mis he her? It's a mis because it's a misdemeanor. It's not a felony. Yeah. So what are they making a big deal out of this for? And secondly, 
I, you know, I, 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 I will always say that there's always a chance that this is, you know, some woman com making a complaint so she can get some publicity. Uh, especially more. if it's something as minimal as this that the police don't even see it as a felony. They see it as a misdemeanor. So don't sit there and make a joke about Cuba Gooding Jr. like he's guilty. Hey, that's what jokes are. No, that isn't what jokes are. That's, yeah. that's what maliciousness is. Uh, okay, so I'm a malicious jokester. You know, well, but, you'd be a jokester if you were funny. <laughs> There's right. another prerequisite you aren't making. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know funny people. <laughs> you know funny people, right? <laughs> Fun by association. I see. And the other thing that happened today is Good that uh, Huckabee Sanders is uh, leaving, right? Yeah, yeah. She's threatening to leave, yeah. No, no she's she not leaving. threatening. She is leaving. I know. Uh, she lasted, what, two and a half years? Yeah, she lasted a long time. I, I, I uh, figure Scaramucci is probably going to come back and say he won't curse. Mm. Well, you know, he, he does a good job on uh, uh, Fox News as a commentator. Why is he a commentator? Who is Scaramucci? Well, you know, yeah. I mean, he was he was he was the president's uh, a press person for well, what? A minute and a half. I, th I thought it was 11 days or seven days or something. 10 days, like I think. 10 days, yeah. Stephanopoulos was Clinton's uh, press secretary. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he played that one. Yeah, and then he turned on Clinton. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You may remember. So. Uh, what, what happened? Is, didn't Stephanopoulos had some issue over a book? Or maybe that he went into porn, porn star, pawn stars and, and bought a book. I, I think that was, that was it. Oh, he did go into porn stars. You're right, Phil. Yeah. Who, who was this? Stephanopoulos. He, he went a, into the, you know, the show you like. Yeah, I, 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 guy. Yeah, I like, I, I, well, I don't yeah. like that show anymore. I used to like it when it was a half hour. And they just, 20 minutes in and out, took care of it, did business. Now it's an hour-long show, so that means 40 minutes of of, of, of actual program, and they stretch it out. And then the host of that show, the guy, the guy who runs the place, he has this laugh that is starting to get to me. It's like, Rick, oh, and, 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 and the little jokes they pull on each other are forced. It's just, yeah. a, it's turning into a terrible show now. Do you and miss the, the old, old man? man? Died, yeah. <laughs> Do I miss the old man? Yeah, I miss yeah. the old man. It sure. died, yeah. Sure, I mean, he didn't contribute much to the show, but he just sat there stuffed, you know, uh, <laughs> yeah, doing whatever he was doing. I mean, uh, but uh, uh, I like that. I used to like, really like that show, but it's just kind of like gotten, you know. Too yeah. I like when they bring the experts in, whether they're experts well, or no, not. Well, no, they always bring in experts, and I'm thinking, yeah. why are you running the fucking pawn shop? Why don't you just have these people run it, you know? Yeah. Well, they're friends. They get publicity. Yeah. You know. I don't know much about books, but let me bring in somebody who reads, <laughs> you know. <laughs> All of a sudden, they bring people. I like it better than, uh, almost better than the Antiques Roadshow, you know, which is. Uh, Antiques Roadshow is great. What about American Pickers? Uh, that's pretty staged, but. And then I, I well, like What are American guys. Pickers? What exactly <laughs> is that? Oh. oh, it's like the fat <laughs> guy and the skinny guy and. They make stupid jokes, and they go around all over looking at everybody's junk. They buy signs, oil cans. Uh, you know, they go into Wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. They go around looking at other people's junk? Yeah. Well, what, what, is, what do you mean by that exactly? And, and they treat, <laughs> you know, they treat these hoarders. I mean, you ever go into a hoarder's house? They're because hoarders, I do insurance yeah. work, Some they, they have claims. And, if you, and I go in there, and it's like, Oh, well, be careful. This stack of newspapers that goes up to the ceiling is very important. You know, and uh, you, know, you, you go into these hoarders' houses and you see food and rotten things and dead mouses underneath crap. There is a movie. There is a movie. And, and, and these guys <laughs> treat them like they're normal. There is a movie out, and it's Scott. Hold on a second. Let me, let me see if I can remember the title here. I've got to find it for you because you've got to... You got to lay your hands on this movie somehow. Um, let's see here, Scott. Uh, da, 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 da. Come on, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Scott. Uh, here we go. Wait a minute. 
uh, Scotty and the Secret History of Hollywood. And it is about this guy, Scott, whatever his name is, who used to run a Richfield gas station in Hollywood <coughs> where people would come in from Hollywood and he would have young men there for these guys who were secretly gay to then go back into a trailer in the back of the Richfield gas station and have sex. And the movie is about his adventures in the skin trade that way. And that he, everybody loved him. They still love him to this day because he was discreet and he was, uh, he was respectful and he was gay himself. And then he made this movie. Well, he was act. Uh, well, then he made. Well, well, he wrote a book, but uh -huh. all the people in the book are dead. Uh. Okay, but the stories he tells are just amazing about the various people in Hollywood who were gay. I mean, people that I didn't. You know, every now and then you hear about so and so being gay, and you go, "Really?" <laughs> you know, I didn't think that. Like Walter Pigeon was one of his biggest um, clients. Pigeon, yeah. Now, you wouldn't well, think of, if anybody remembers Walter Pigeon, does anybody? Mrs. Miniver. Charlie, do you remember Walter Pigeon at all? Yeah. Oh, you do. How about you, Josh? Do you remember Walter Pigeon? No. no. Yeah. I remember the How, name. Uh, Jeff remembers Walter Pigeon, right, Jeff? No, I don't. I do. You don't? Mrs. Oh, Miniver. okay. Oh. Well, anyway. The name, yes. But yeah, can't. the name I remember, I can't remember whatever yeah. he did. Uh, here, here, here's a big one for you. This, this, uh, of course, I've known this for years, but uh, maybe most of you didn't. Spencer Tracy yeah. Yeah. Yes. was gay. Wow. It was real. And so cool. was Catherine Hepburn. That's why they were pals. But he never uh -huh. lived, he, according to this guy, he never lived with Catherine Hepburn. But she was kind of his beard, you oh. know. Mm. Uh, uh, and there's a funny beard because he was cheating on his wife with his beard, supposedly. Oh. But he says, right. he says that uh, Catherine Hepburn and Spencer Tracy never had sex. Oh. Then he mentions the Duke and Duchess of Windsor. Oh. If they would come to the United States, come to Hollywood and go to him... Her to have a woman and him to have a guy. Which Duke and Duchess? The, well, the one, the yeah. one that were, you know the, turned down the, uh, the that abdicated the, that throne? Abdicated the oh, throne. Yeah, uh, yeah. Wow. And, uh, yeah. So what do they do? Go to the Richfield Station, get an oil change and a and a blowjob. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much <laughs> it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and he go. They go on and on about a lot of different people in Hollywood, and it's a great documentary. It is, and but what the reason I brought him up was he's a hoarder. He's got mm. like four homes, and they're all filled with nothing but crap. <laughs> well, the, these, this show that Charlene was talking about, they treat these hoarders like they're normal, like they're not sick. They do, yeah. Uh, you know, the, and uh, it, it's amazing. You know, it's, it, it's a sickness, you know, and uh, I, I, I don't understand how people can do it, and, and they kind of encourage them oh yes you know we understand no you don't understand get your shit out of Listen, there Phil, and, and get I a dumpster can explain to you why they do that yeah because these guys have stores and they sell these oil cans and these signs yeah and they found out that if they go around to these crazy hoarders that if they weed through all their junk and the, they call it the rusty gold and all that that's how that's the business they're in didn't they ever hear a craigslist make... <laughs> yeah oh come on phil you know, or eBay, you know. Yeah. Uh, I think they make a lot of the stuff that they sell, you know, that they actually make reproductions of it and then sell them in their store. I don't think the all of them are real. Well, yeah. on the show, they've like they've uh, bought reproduction by accident once in a while, and then they get really mad because, you know, the guy's supposed to be good, and he knows the reproduction when he sees it, and by accident, he paid a ton mm -hmm. of money, and there was a reproduction. Oh, oh in this uh, Scotty and the Secret History of Hollywood, the one he brings up, and, yeah. you know, we've always suspected it, but he always denied it was Cary Grant. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that, that. Uh, Cary Grant... Uh, and Diane Cannon swore, you know, she wrote a book, she swore that he was straight, she was married to him or something. And yeah. She gets angry, I yeah. thought I saw some uh, thing on Cary Grant not too long ago. I can't remember where I saw it. It was... Uh, it's probably a movie, Phil. It was like Netflix or one of those. No, it was a... Uh, 
uh, you know, uh, like life history. Uh, yeah, well, you know, I'll tell you something. Uh, I, you Biography. know, th there are certain people like Cary Grant. If you told me he was gay, people would say that. I'd go, <laughs> okay, so what? You know, because I, he's so likable. Well, they talked about his young years, and and he was, uh, I guess, grew up poor in England, and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, Archie yeah. Beach. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it was it was an interesting biography. Yeah, but anyway, he uh, he he was roomies with Randolph Scott, and if you ever saw pictures of the two of them together with their little terrier dog, uh -huh. uh, I mean, it, and they said these are the best of pals, and they're roommates. Hey, yeah. I got a terrier dog. Yeah, sure, <laughs> they're roommates. <laughs> You know, so, I mean, uh, but the, the, what happened was Cary Grant, if you may remember, sued Chevy Chase because know, Chevy Chase right. implied that Cary Grant was gay. And he, they, he, they sued, he sued Chevy Chase and uh, Chevy relented and went, okay, he's not gay. You know, Richard Gere sued somebody too. Like, well, the story with Richard Gere was a little more vicious. Yeah, uh, what was that story? It was a magazine. Oh, oh that that he went to a hospital one night uh, late oh, to have a thing. gerbil removed from his ass. The gerbil thing, right? The gerbil yeah. thing. Uh, and now later on, he was married to Cindy Crawford. Yeah. And they took out a big ad, the two of them, or something, because some magazine, like I don't know if it's W or somebody, like they made an insinuation. They've always insinuated Richard Gere was gay, right? They, he gets angry. they always insinuated like that Richard Gere was gay. Um, yeah, they've been insinuating for years. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. And, uh, it John, could have been John Travolta. Was in Bent hmm? on Broadway when he came out. He did Bent or something. It was a gay play, and he played a gay character, I guess. Really? Now, now, now they're telling me that Vinnie Barbarino was gay. Actually, there's uh, stories uh, yeah. that that uh, Travolta is gay. Yeah. Yeah. He's weird. Wasn't he doing something to massage guys, like groping them or something? Or wasn't there a thing going around that he would get a massage in a hotel and the, the masseuse was complaining that he was? Uh, I think I, I heard that a while ago. Really? Yeah, it was a TMZ thing or something. I think. Well, you didn't it, give enough of a tip. <laughs> Are there rumors? There are rumors that uh, that uh, Tom Cruise is gay. That yeah. that one of the reasons he's so big a Scientologist is to try and clean the gay out of himself or something like mm -hmm. that, you know. Got to wash that gay right out. But of you your see, the hair. thing is, the thing is, by <laughs> saying today that somebody's gay isn't really the ruination of that person. It, to right. to say, oh, do you know that Tom Cruise is gay? Well, I mean, so what? <laughs> you know, what else? Right. They're going to say that Buttigieg is gay. Yeah, right. Uh, you know. Yeah. Yeah. He but puts the he puts know. the butt in butter jet. Yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, I don't know. Is he a top or a bottom? By the way, uh, Josh, what do you think of and and Jeff too? I'll bring Jeff into this about uh, Mayor Pete. I think he's terrific. I think he's oh, he's beautiful because you know what? He's smart. Yeah. He's articulate. Yeah. Uh, and and he's and he's willing to to open his mouth and. And say things. Yeah. Well, so is Tussie Gabbard. Uh, you know, she's. Uh, you know, there's some things that she stands for. That Who? I don't care. She's oh. from Hawaii. She, uh, is she a Congress? Is Congress she right? Uh, uh, there are some people. Tussie every now and Gabbard. then, some name comes up. Of somebody who's running for president with the Democrats, and I'm going, "Who the fuck are they? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and and why are they doing this to themselves? You know? Did you ever find out who Same Yang thing, was? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Yang. He was on uh, Bill Maher last week. Yeah. 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 yeah cool. light, light lightweight. Lightweight. Uh, no, I think uh, uh, Mayor Pete, I, I, you know, in a strange way, I think could have a good shot at winning against Trump because he's, he's, he, he's got a lot of great things going for him. Let's be yeah, honest he, about he it. He never missed the July 4th parade in his uh, hometown there when he was mayor. Really? Oh yeah, yeah. He yeah. Uh, no, he's uh, you know. I mean, he for instance, he came out the other day with uh, his foreign policy and what we would do about Afghanistan and so on. And when he talks about it, you go, well, you know, he's been there. You yeah. know, he knows what it's Trump. about. Trump wants to pull the troops out. Of yeah, Afghanistan. And I think so does Buttigieg. 
but, but, yeah. uh, what, however you pronounce it. Yeah. Mayor Pete. Uh, yeah. Um, but, I mean, he is smart. He's, don't you agree, Jeff? He's smart. He's, uh, no. he's his thoughts, his he's, ideas he's are, aren't he has off. good experience. Yeah, they aren't off the wall. He's got better experience than a lot of senators in running things, you know. I mean, everybody goes, oh, he's just the mayor of some town somewhere. But, you know, that's administration of a, of a government. He um, was on the school board. Yeah. <laughs> and, PTA. Yeah. And, you know, and nobody seems to even be bothered by the fact that he's gay. It just doesn't seem to come up. You, you know, know, it's gotten to the point where if if you say something negative uh, about the fact that uh, someone's gay, mm -hmm. uh, there's there's so much backlash that it is it isn't worth it. Well, that's you why know? I'm saying he would have a good shot Jeff against Trump. Jeff seems to take offense to that. Yes, Jeff. I, I don't take offense to that. I, take, I, get I have a exception. different a different exception. I think everybody knows gay people in our family. Yeah. And that's the reality. And yeah. it's not just one out of a thousand. If there was a time when he didn't because it was because it was so closeted. But it's not yeah. closeted yes. anymore. And so uh, the fact that Mayor Pete is gay almost has no bearing on his, on his presidential uh, credentials. But and on top of that, when he's seen with his husband, they're holding hands, they're affectionate. You know, and it's kind of like, you don't like this? Get used to it. So let's say yeah. Mayor Pete becomes the president, mm -hmm. and he has to deal with the Saudis and the Iranians. Yeah. And, uh, and they, they kill gay people. Uh, you know, how do you think it, it's, you know, it's going to go over? Do you think that that's a, you know, something that is going to, let's say it would affect uh, what he does if he became president? So Matt C Crash writes, Mayor Pete doesn't, stand for anything, Bernie 2000. Matt, you uh, haven't listened to Mayor Pete in the last couple of days. He's for a lot of stuff. Okay. He's for everything Bernie's for. Well, yeah. Uh, and and, and, uh, and uh, what's his name? Uh, Biden, uh, he's for everything the AOC is for. No, he's not. And, and I, I, he's not I, don't, plagiarizing I, don't, I don't really know what and I'll get Bernie's back to your whole thing about the, dealing with the Saudis. Who, who gives a shit about dealing with the Saudis anyway? Uh, well, it's uh, just, you know. Hey, I'm gay. I'm president. Get used to it. You don't want to come to the White House and stay in Saudi Arabia. You know? Uh, you know or invite me, uh, invite me down to your embassy and cut me into 20 different pieces. You know, I mean, that's, that's what they do over there. But uh, uh, what was I saying about... Uh, Oh, about uh, Biden. Yeah. Uh, Biden is not going to get the nomination. You don't think so? No. Nope. No. I just, I just think there's too much between him and a nomination. Uh, I think he is the guy that Trump's most worried about because he's the guy that Trump goes after the most. And you can yeah, always tell he, where he, his... He's going to be easy pickings with the Ukraine thing, uh, with his son... Uh, and and the things that uh, were, were going on. I mean, Trump has got a lot of ammunition against this guy that he hasn't unloaded yet. I don't think that kind of stuff is going to hurt him. No? No, no. I think that, I, I, however, I think a Mayor Pete, as an example, has very little baggage, very little that Trump can assail. I mean, what can Trump say about him? He He's can't. He, huh? No, he's he, gay. He can't. He can't use that card. That would not play well. That would be terrible. But what else can he say about him? I mean, Mayor uh, have Mayor, Mayor Pete. Well, yeah, Mayor, 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 Mayor Pete. Listen, Trump didn't have experience. Not, I know. That's why I, said, I guess he can't even say that. Yeah. Uh, he, you know, he he has a better education than Trump had. Uh, he, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. He, 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 he served in the military not once but twice for two tours of duty in Afghanistan. Trump, on the other hand, weaseled out of service. So what can he assail Pete, Mayor Pete, for? Charlie, if you're Trump, who, what are you going to put Mayor Pete down for? No, I, I don't think he's got anything. Yeah. I mean, no, it's, it's very difficult. No now, now Biden... Dirt. 
Biden labors under the problem that he's got 30, 40 years of baggage. All right. You know, if Mayor Pete were Biden's age, he would have 30 or 40 years of baggage, too. But Mayor Pete doesn't. Obama didn't have much baggage. That's what made him such a good candidate. It was hard to assail him for a record. And you know, Biden and, did that flip flop on the abortion thing. Hmm? That didn't look too good. Oh, the Hyde Amendment. The Hyde Amendment. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I think he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's not really versed on what's out there. I think his intel is back from 1988, yeah. and uh, I, I think he got trapped. Uh, he didn't know what he was agreeing to. But on the other hand, uh, you know, that's uh, but, but, that's what he does. Yes, Charlene. He makes gaps. You know, it seems like um, Trump and Biden are starting like this thing where Bi Biden is starting to say that Trump isn't any good. Like he, like that commercial that he ran about anti-Trump and then he's anti-Biden. Yeah. You know, at least uh, the other two, you know, well, I was thinking Beto O'Rourke, too. They're yeah. not doing this like smear campaign kind of thing right away yet. The only one, yeah. they're all they're running against, issues. Charlene, they're all running against Trump. They're all saying, hey, vote for me because I'm not Trump, except Andrew Yang. Now, I don't agree with all the Andrew Yang stuff, but he actually talks about substance and policy and uh, he has though? ideas. Well, so, so, mm -hmm. is, so, so is Buttigieg. Now, uh, we got Matt Crash saying Bernie doesn't have any baggage. He has 40 years of consistency. Bullshit. Matt Crash. Go ask some people who live up in Vermont who know the man. They say yeah. he's a real asshole. Okay. He's Gene Debs and Roe v. Wade. Uh, he was pro choice before Bro v. Wade? Yes. Well, I mean and that that and that's fine, but I'm saying that he is not from what I know, uh, I know people that know him personally and say he's not really a nice guy. And Alice. he's he's and his wife's a crook too. He, 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 they say he's oh, yeah. he's not great to do business with because he'll try and you know snocker you. Didn't uh, his wife uh, get all sorts of loans from uh, misstated uh, things, almost like uh, uh, Trump's lawyer? Mm -hmm. uh, it was she took like she overstated some stuff and got well, look, hundreds. Here, of here's where I think. Look, here's where I think uh, uh, Sanders' value is. Sanders' value is, is that he is bespeaking socialism, and he's explaining it to the population, and I think that's a good thing. Uh, I don't think, however, he can win. I, I just don't think he can win, They're and that's the problem. The socialist. Well, it isn't a question of a socialist. Franklin because Delano Roosevelt, he'd still be president. If he and he's still dead, Charlie. But he, dead. he was, he was a, a socialist that got elected four times. But there, uh, Wilson and, and, uh, and Roosevelt and all of those guys, they were all uh, all uh, all, all a good socialist has to do if he's running for president in this country is explain to the American public why socialism will benefit them. And once they do that, and if they do it effectively, socialism will not be a problem to get elected on. Uh, I, I don't think you're right. I, well, I, I think no, 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 no. You're, what you're thinking of the is the fact that there are Republicans. Republicans can't touch. These, These guys are, are there, wait a minute, there are Republicans. There are Republicans who have poisoned the well of socialism. Because they've made people think, oh, socialism is terrible. And you ask people, well, why is socialism terrible? And they go, oh, I don't know, but I just hear, I just hear it's terrible. It takes away the individual desire. No, no, to, no, no, to earn. no. Not if you have, if you have, a, a, you, socialism can work very nicely in a, a democracy, work very, work very well in a capitalistic society, in other words, where the money making is capitalistic, but then has socialistic programs to take care of the real needs of people, like health. Like Hong Kong? What do you mean, like, what do you, what do you bring up Hong Kong yeah, for? Well, what, that what, was a what, total capitalistic No, 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 Phil, 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 uh, Phil, Phil, Phil. No, it is still I'm working as a social, it's still working as a socialistic uh, entity, how, as a, uh, uh, rather as a capitalistic entity, the, what's going on in China, in Hong Kong, has nothing to do with socialism or has to do with capitalism. Government it control. What? It has to do with government control, yes. 
And that has nothing. The, the Chinese are all for social, uh, all for capitalism. Look at them. Because yeah, all they get is a bowl of rice. Look, and they, no, and not uh, Phil, a Phil, that's racist. Okay, shut up a second, well, Phil. Josh, Josh, was, well, Josh, was, this party. Josh was giving a look. Josh, what did that look say? Uh, I don't think it was for Phil, actually. Sorry. What was it for? Something. It else? was for the fact that my phone let me know, like, from fourteen different people, that the fucking Raptors won that basketball game. I don't care. Oh, that's so uh, terrible. Maybe now I'll be able to get back on the court. No. Uh, so I'm sorry. The <laughs> point is that that uh, you know, so uh, this country needs a nice socialist base. But certainly we can be um, uh, capitalist, but it has to be responsible capitalism. It can't be greedy capitalism, just like you don't want socialism that is so socialistic to the exclusion of everything else. What we need is a nice, good balance in this country. And we don't have a balance in this country. This is a greedy, capitalistic country in which all our decisions are made upon our greedy needs and not on the be in the best interest of the people. And somehow, the stupider people are being sold a bill of goods and being told, socialism is bad. Socialism would be great for them. It would be great for the farmers. Greedy. You don't think guys like Al Gore and, 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 this, and the tax... I don't give a shit. The, the carbon uh, tax, no, uh, that's all a socialistic uh, 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 ploy uh, 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 no. to give the elites uh, no. more wealth? I, I, I think that, uh, you know, I don't think... Uh, they're going to run it? I don't think that's the reason why Al Gore is doing what he's doing. I mean, uh, why is he doing what he's doing, Phil? Because he uh, felt that that would make him uh, rich beyond his wildest dreams. No, he did not, he's not an environmentalist for the money. Oh? Uh, well, then why does he want a carbon tax? Well, he is. He's trying to fix the. Well, you're acting. You're, you're, you're acting like you're acting, acting like if there's a carbon tax, Phil, he's going to get a cut of it. Come yes, on, he Phil. He'll get a cut of it. Not only will he get a cut of it, he'll tell you how he wants it spent. Why does Trump think that these tariff things work? I mean, your boy Trump wants to. Tax because he's trying to level the playing field. And he's leveling um, the playing field. That are you know, no, but where fair. he's an he's idiot is he... People behind their backs. He doesn't, over their eyes. He doesn't you know, understand. He does not understand economics. I don't know how he got, I, I his, degree, how he got his degree from wherever that was. Or, Wharton. Uh, I, because I, because I, the know, fact Wharton of the matter is, the fact of the matter is that uh, the tariffs are not... Punitive against the country you're doing the tariffs against. It's punitive yes, against are. the people who are buying no, the goods from that country. Americans from buying from foreign countries. Right. Mm -hmm. That doesn't punish the foreign countries. That punishes yes, the Yes, it Americans. does. You don't buy their shit. It sits on a ship somewhere out in the middle of the ocean. Oh no, no, no. Yellow. They simply send it to India and they'll buy the shit there. They make their own shit there. Hey, you don't want Chinese goods? Oh. That's fine. Hey. Well, I, almost every manufacturer make, you know, get from China. almost every manufacturer flooring that I deal with is now manufacturing in Vietnam or uh, and 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 Malaysia and other countries to avoid the tariffs. Almost nothing is going to come from PRC, uh, People's Republic of China. Uh, you know, I get these cartons. They say PRC. Where are they from? Uh, I, uh, Puerto believe Rico. me, believe me, the Chinese <laughs> are not sweating it. Okay, yeah. they're not sweating it. Well, well you also, because what they're going to also you can't you can't believe that if tariffs harm the exporting country, you can't really believe that and also be anti-immigration, especially in the case of Mexico, because those two things don't really mesh. If it's going to kill Mexico's economy, that's not going to want to make Mexicans not come here. When, I mean, when did Trump yeah. say he was you know. anti-immigration? He said he was anti-illegal immigration. He's anti-Mexican. Uh, you know, I think it's pretty clear that he wants right. people to come in on a merit basis. You know, so we only want rich Mexicans who could have came here anyway. I mean, smart Mexicans. <laughs> you don't oh, have boy. to be rich yet. Get rich asylum here. are not doing so illegally. That is perfectly oh, legal. Yeah, no, it's because the coyotes are giving them a speech. Oh, I am, I am, uh, I need asylum. Well, so, but they, they go to 
Ecuador and some of these places in Guatemala and see what's happening there. I heard the nice place. They have real reasons to be leaving those places. Yeah, and if they would put jobs down there, then uh, instead of in China, those people would have something. Uh, folks, in case you're listening to this program, um, Phil is our special child. And, yeah. And, and, and you ha- you have, real special. we have to treat him with a certain amount of... Here, look, here's a lollipop, Phil. Hey, I... Maybe I'm a relative of How- Howard Stern. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're, we're gonna get you the help you need. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Uh, I want you to. I want to say good. Dietetic, I no want to say good night to you. Uh, good night, Phil. We won't see you tomorrow night. No. Uh, and uh, good night, F- uh, Jeff. And good night to Charlie. And good night to Charlene. And of course, Josh. Always pleasure having you here. Come back tomorrow night. The coast will be clear. You can get a word in edgewise. Everybody, why don't you give a, a big wave goodbye to everybody out there, and I'll wave back at you, okay? It's the customary nighttime wave here on the uh, on this ramble. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. Good show tonight. Good show. And I actually felt pretty good all night, uh, except my chest is hurting. That's, that's another story. It's not a heart attack. Don't worry about it. Anyway, I'm going to be going now. Uh, because I, I have to go because Jack Bishop is next. He's going to be here with a program called uh, The Intersection. I'll be back again tomorrow night after uh, uh, Damian Chaplin is here. <clears throat> Excuse me, because my voice is here with the, uh, uh, with the uh, exchange. I'll be back again tomorrow night at, you got it, 10 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? (laughs) Bye-bye, everybody.